Okay, hi Reed. Um, so I, I really did enjoy watching your film and I think uh, it, it does offer a very interesting perspective uh, from, from, uh, from somebody who uses a wheelchair. And from somebody who uses a manual wheelchair, I, I did think that it was a, uh, there, there were a lot of um, scenes and moments that I, I, I could really identify with. Uh, but I just wanted to understand a bit more about um, how, how did you go about uh, sort of composing these various shots? Uh, they were all very poetically composed and, you know, some with even a degree of uh, certain personal risk. The, the, the whole thing about, you know, sort of running against a, a concrete pavement that you see coming. Um, I, I, I just wanted to you know, hear from you to see what, how, how do you go around, how go about sort of composing these shots? Sure, thank you so much. Um, I think I just wanted to play around and, and kind of experiment and see what would work and what wouldn't work. So I would, I would put the camera on the various places of my wheelchair and see what kind of shot I would get what the aesthetics of the shot would be, what the good, what the not so good. Um, I've also really always um, liked street photography. So I use that experience with street photography to compose a lot of the moving shots you see on the street. I was also curious about the how did the narrative start to come together when you were putting all these shots together and um uh you know how, how do you start to weave uh these different slice of life kinds of approaches that you had with uh different shots? Yeah, it took a lot of work. Uh, it took a lot of editing. Uh, we had a great editor, and um, it was a lot of trial and error and, and seeing what would work, and a lot of kind of um, writing and editing outside of the other program, and kind of putting really figuring out what the threads of the film were or what the storylines or the themes were and, and um, seeing how we could interweave, interweave them. Yeah, and, and indeed, I, I, I think one of the central themes of, uh, of this film is, is this notion of the, the circus stance and the freak show um, and I was just wondering, do, so what if question, do you think that this would have turned out quite differently if there wasn't this serendipity of maybe the tent being put up? <laughs> yes, I think it would have been harder to make. Um, however, we, we didn't know if the tent would make it into the film until about halfway through editing. So it is possible that we could have made the film without the circus step, but I think this, I really wanted the circus step because I had been thinking about the freak show for a while and how it, uh, its presence in society, its presence in my old work, it wasn't in the documentary audience. So in short, um, I, I think it would have been possible, but I don't think it would have had that extra element that really kind of grounds one of the central questions of the film. Yeah, indeed. I, I... I'm glad that the, the circumstance stayed in the film as well. I think it really lent it a, a certain focus, yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, on, on the topic of, uh, you know, freak shows and how um, people with disabilities are being seen, 
I was mm -hmm. wondering if you would comment a little about uh, one of the uh, comments that you made in the film, uh, where you where you 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 spoke about how um, you you hope that this this will be the last film that's sort of centered on on yourself. Um, right. And is is that is that reason why uh, you know is it because there's a certain way of being seen that you? I think there are a few reasons. One of them is there are a lot of topics out there that don't affect me directly that I would really like to make films about. Um, it's also it's also exhausting to be to allow yourself to be vulnerable and to to put yourself out there and I just don't really have any desire to make a film that talks about my, my life in any way, shape or form. And I just would like to focus on film that I don't necessarily have personal experience related to. I was also wondering about the, um, you know, the various interactions that you film of yourself with, uh, you know, your friends going out or, or even the, the sort of the casual nonchalance of people um, being part of this uh, uh, film. How, how were they, uh, how did they end up being part of the, the, the film and were there any sort of these kinds of encounters that you know, you couldn't find a way to sort of weave into the narrative. I think we included all of the characters that we felt were relevant and, and kind of um, cinematic. Um, so we, as, as the film is about ableism and, and I think if you want to make a film about your disability, you don't point the camera at yourself. You point the camera outward and try to grasp people's reaction to your disability. And that's what I was really trying to do. And, uh, and I did capture the very um, I think significant interactions. Yep, I really loved how it it sort of showed how the uh it, it wasn't just the environment that was being sort of disabling. There was also the, the attitudes of people, you know, like people who just right. park exactly. their car across, you know, the crosswalk, or exactly. or somebody running a wires over over a ramp. Um, yep. Did they realize that you were filming them uh, throughout the entire sort of the encounter? My my camera was right there. I was, yeah. Yeah, and and totally no, uh, very little sense of remorse. I would say uh, <laughs> in, yeah, in general. I, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I but what I really also enjoyed was also yeah. sort of the glimpses um that that you showed of your reactions to them. Um. Uh, of saying that no no it's okay i don't need any help or or even yeah. the 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 very sort of climatic part where uh that, that that rage that sense of rage do you feel that we often have to sort of um hide certain sort of emotions when yes absolutely Absolutely. I, I think I think the kind of that scene you talked about, I hope it informs the the the, the film that that came before it where where it's like even though um you don't see it, I am perpetually angry or I perpetually have that rage or I feel like I can always scream but I kind of hold it in until it all boils over. It's this idea of a simulation and, and trying to be um, 
trying to be as normal as possible, adapting and overcoming. And um, at the end of the day, we're humans, and the 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 Lord is not set out for us in a lot of the people are not um not very um receptive to our presence as so that is obviously gonna cause anger and hurt and pain but, but I think we are taught not to show that or do or do all the Show it when it is egregious. What ableism is egregious? Very true indeed. Yeah, I really felt that, that that sense of rage. I was so happy to see that portrayed, and instead of just like what you said, you know, sort of just adapting and trying to be nice and assimilate. Grateful, um, very grateful for access. Grateful for people asking you if you need help. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So I um, I want to switch tracks a bit to talk about about the 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 music and the narration. Um, so I mean the the visuals were spectacular, and you you mentioned you know like how how. It, it, spend some time trying to film it and shoot it all. But I was wondering, how how did you sort of uh, choose the kinds of music? Because I, I did find that the the, the, the rhythmic cuts of the, the wheelchair was such a familiar sound for me. I'm not sure whether it'd be a familiar sound for, for the rest of the audience when it, when it screens. But um, I, I, I did want to try to understand, you know, how, how did that, that, that choice come about? Yes, yeah, so the editor of the film Ty Channel is also a musician. So he very much edited this film like a song in terms of the just the visuals. And then for the music, um we wanted the music to augment or complement the the scenes rather than manipulate them or tell them how the audience should feel and Ty has a tremendous music library so he was able to pick these songs and lay them in and I think they just really blessed well with with the visuals and the audio track um so be really thankful for that uh Todd to have that knowledge to to put that music in hmm. yeah it really it really worked very well together with the entire film so Thank you. uh Perhaps now we move on to, to the uh, maybe last questions, uh, unless you have, you have more that you want to share. But I was um, thinking about what would be a, a kind of topic that you would like to delve into next. Yeah, I am looking at how society has a higher tolerance for death among disabled people with the non-disabled people, whether it's um, medically assisted suicide or medical negligence that goes on unprosecuted. Um, and, and where we're going in terms of, of increasing disparity between um, our tolerance of death between disabled and non-disabled people. Wow, oh, it's a wonderful top. I mean, it's a very somber topic, but I, I can't wait to see what uh, you come up with on that. Thank you, I really appreciate that. 
okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for, for joining in on this conversation and, um, and, and for sharing your film with us. Um, and I, I can't wait to see the, the reactions from, from the audience uh, when it is screened at SGF. Thank you so much, Fiona. Thank you for having me and screening the film. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, thanks. Bye.